and Minister Casey Madu with Justice and Solicitor General. Um, to the reporters uh, in the building with us and those on the line, we will get to your questions after both ministers have had a chance to speak this morning. Um, when you step up to the microphone here in the federal building or if you're on the phone, please identify who you are and what outlet you are with and then you will have the opportunity to ask a question and a follow-up as well. Let's begin this morning by introducing the Honourable Rajan Sani, Alberta's Minister of Transportation. Minister? Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Rob. I'm here this morning today with my colleague, the Honourable Casey Madhu, Minister of Justice and Solicitor General, to announce changes to automated traffic enforcement, better known as photo radar. Photo radar is a hot button issue for Albertans. There are many who feel that it can be used unfairly to generate revenue instead of using it for its intended purpose, which is to improve traffic safety. Photo radar has been used on Alberta roads since 1987. Right now, 26 Alberta municipalities have photo radar programs. In the fiscal year 2019 to 20, photo radar programs generated $203 million in revenue. In 2019, the government instituted a freeze on the purchase and placement of new photo radar units and sites. This freeze was to ensure that municipalities and police services didn't invest in new photo radar equipment or make costly equipment upgrades while we worked on what improvements needed to be made to Alberta's photo radar program. Our government engaged with the municipalities and law enforcement agencies that use photo radar to identify opportunities to ensure that photo radar was indeed being used for safety. Today, we are announcing we are making changes to the photo radar system. The two-year freeze on new photo radar equipment and locations will be extended for an additional year until December 1st, 2022. This extension will give time for municipalities and law enforcement agencies to meet new photo radar requirements. By April 2022, photo radar will not be allowed in areas that have rapid changes in speed, such as highway on-off ramps and highway exit on-off ramps. Photo radar will be prohibited on residential streets with speeds less than 50 kilometers per hour unless they are school or playground zones or construction zones. Drivers will no longer have the unhappy experience of getting multiple speeding tickets if the speeding offenses occur within five minutes of each other. Municipalities will need to submit quarterly reports to Alberta Justice and Solicitor General. In June of 2022, site selection criteria that do not show traffic safety justifications will be removed. Photo radar in construction zones will be restricted to only when workers are present, and photo radar in school zones will be restricted to only when school is in session based on municipal bylaws. <coughs> By next December, all photo radar sites will be reassessed using new location criteria and data. Municipalities and law enforcement will also need to try a different traffic safety tool to curb speeding before considering photo radar at a new location. This traffic safety tool could be something like speed bumps or education to change driver behavior, but it will be up to the municipality or law enforcement agency to determine the best method. All photo radar operators will need to make photo radar vehicles more visible to drivers, similar to the steps the City of Edmonton took in 2020 with its well-known yellow trucks. Municipalities and law enforcement agencies will also be required to advertise new photo radar sites online and through social media. As Transportation Minister, I do want to reiterate that safety on our roads is priority number one. Albertans can be confident these new rules will put a stop to photo radar fishing holes or speed traps. This is about making sure photo radar will be used to improve traffic safety. Thank you for your time this morning, and now I'd like to welcome the Honourable Casey Madhu, Minister of Justice and Solicitor General. Good 
And thank you, Minister Sonny. Good morning, everyone. For many Albertans, uh, traffic laws are the aspect of law enforcement they encounter most frequently in their lives. Speed limits, traffic lights, we accept these as natural and necessary to maintain safety and order on our busy street. But photo radar is a different story. While there is scientific evidence that photo radar can lower collision rates, there are also a lot of drivers who feel that photo radar is being used more as a source of revenue than a safety tool. In other words, that photo radar has largely become a cash grab. It was clear we needed to take a step back and consult with municipalities and law enforcement to create a more transparent, accountable principles around the use of photo radar and help keep the focus on safety. These new changes, which will begin to come into effect in April 2022, will ensure that photo radar returns to its original primary purpose, keeping our roads safe, improving driver behavior, and saving lives. Any new photo radar locations would need to serve those goals first and foremost. Photo radar fines will continue to be a source of revenue, but not true unfair tactics such as speed traps or the so-called fishing holes. As my colleague explained, it's been two years since this government implemented a freeze on a new automated traffic enforcement equipment and technology. We are extending that freeze until December 2022 to allow these changes to photo radar policy to take place. Thanks to all the stakeholders who contributed to these consultations and to all drivers on Alberta's roads and highways who continue to practice road safety and obey our traffic laws, regardless of whether a photo radar unit is ahead or not. Uh, thank you. We will now be able to take your questions. Thank you, Minister Madhu, as well as Minister Sani. Appreciate that. We do have a couple of uh, reporters with us this morning. Um, first of all, go ahead, Janet. Hi, Janet French from the CBC. I think my first question is for Minister Sani. Um, it's about, um, if I recall correctly, the goal of this study for the past two years was to try and ascertain whether or not the way photo radar was being used was in the interest of safety over the interest of cash generation. Um, can you be more specific about exactly what did you find about whether or not it actually is driven by safety? So as part of our review, we did engage extensively with municipalities and there was a report that was released in 2019. And in that report, basically what the finding was is that we had very scant data. We weren't collecting data and evidence on a, in a consistent fashion. The municipalities weren't at that time. So it was very difficult to do a full-scale evaluation if indeed photo radar was being used for safety initiatives. So that is why, as we um, update our guidelines, part of what we are requesting municipalities to do is to have more robust procedures in place to collect this data. And that data will further inform the effectiveness of photo radar when we review it again a year from now. And the follow-up? Uh, my follow-up's for Minister Madhu. Sorry to keep making you switch. Uh, totally different topic. I just wanted to ask you about ACERT and the departure of Sue Hewson. So, I mean, obviously you've lost the head of this agency and, and she did raise concerns about uh, resourcing and how well this agency could do its job before she left. Um, what do you have to say about her departure and what do you think are the challenges in recruiting a replacement for her? Uh, let me uh, first and foremost uh, thank Ms. Sue Hoofson for her excellent work whilst at the helm of her first at ASERT. I thank her for her service and for her dedication to that agency and to our province. That said, 
Let me be clear, her departure was planned. It was not um, a resignation as the media has reported. Um, she is simply needed in my department to deal with a high profile, a complex um, a prosecution. Uh, and so, again, I want to be clear that Ms. Hilfson's um, departure was planned by the department. Um, I understand it when I took on this particular role that there were concerns with manpower at ASAT. And I can confirm that um, today, ASAT have got the resources that they need, and I have been working with my department to make sure that they have all of the resources that they need, because I do believe in the work that that agency does. Thank you. Thank you. Next series of questions in the room. Yeah, Shalan Skalski, CTV News. Just on that topic then, um, Houston did leave after months of concerns about funding and file backlogs. Are you considering changes? You said you believe they have the manpower they need. Are you considering any changes to give them more resources or address some of the concerns that Houston raised? So I am not considering any changes, but what I'm, what I'm working on is to make sure that they have got all of the manpower and the resources that they need. My follow-up would be for Minister Sani. Thank you. On the issue of photo radar, obviously we want to make sure that it's improving safety um, and not as a cash cow, as you had mentioned, but was there any consultation or consideration on how changes to this would impact uh, police and city budgets? Obviously, this is a big revenue generator for cities, so what kinds of what impact do you think that today's changes will have on cities? Well, first, there was uh, extensive consultation. We did uh, do um, significant stakeholder engagement with municipalities and police services. And I think what these changes will do in terms of budgets is that there will be some impacts, but the important point to note is that there will be more clarity introduced in the guidelines in terms of what we are requiring for a data collection, in terms of when photo radar can be used and how site selection is determined. So the uh, impact on budgets will be minimal, but the introduction of clarity in the guidelines will certainly make sure that we have less gray and more black and white in terms of how to move forward with photo radar. Thank you. Operator, could you put through our first caller this morning, please? Alberta today. Oh, good morning. I, I believe this question is for Minister Sawney. Um, so I'm just, I'm just a little confused as to why there's yet another year, because this, the, the Tantus MNP report was finished June 12, 2018, as you, as you mentioned, was released in 2019. There's been two years since then. And at, at the time, the, the recommendations were the same. It's um, prohibiting photo radar on tr transition zones, requiring an annual reporting, all, all the things you're suggesting today. So why do they need another year? So those recommendations were outlined in that 2019 report, but what was missing was the uh, stakeholder engagement. We hadn't had sufficient discussions with municipalities and police services at that time, and it's very difficult to bring forward any policy changes without talking to the folks who are directly impacted. So yes, some of the recommendations are the same, but there are also new recommendations as well, which require um, additional reporting by the municipalities in terms of how they are collecting their data and how they're uh, looking at site selection. And there's also um, additional recommendations around um, ensuring that uh, uh, speed zones are, and speed zones and fishing holes are reduced and minimized. So while those recommendations are largely the same, they have been enhanced by additional measures as well, and that's entirely based on our discussions with municipalities and police services. And do you have a follow-up? Okay. I do, thank you. I guess, I guess, well, I am confused why the extra year then after the two years. But um, speaking of those impacts, you say they can't have new photo radars without uh, considering uh, other measures such as um, tra traffic calming, you know, speed bumps, that sort of thing. So you're taking away a source of revenue and expecting them to spend more. So are, are you planning on any additional safety grant streams for these municipalities? 
There aren't any plans as of yet to introduce any additional grants, and that's certainly something that we can consider. But again, I'll go back to my comments originally that it's really important to understand exactly what's happening in terms of how these photo radar sites are selected, and that requires making sure that we have the data collected from the municipalities. Once you have that information, it's going to inform any other further policy changes. And it is important to note that there are other interventions that can be used aside from photo radar that can be quite effective in enhancing safety on the roads. And it's very worthwhile to have that request from municipalities to look at alternative alternative ways to, to ensure that safety goals are accomplished. Thank you. Operator, could you put through the next caller, please? Bell, Calgary Sun. Uh, good morning, Ministers. Uh, I feel, echoing the uh, last questioner, I've got stacks and stacks of columns about photo radar going back years. Um, and this doesn't sound like it's doing very much. So I'm going to ask you a, a question and a supplementary. Question one is, I understand you asked the municipalities about photo radar, and I bet they told you they like photo radar money. And you went to the cops, and I bet you the cops said they like photo radar money. Um, so that's no surprise. What additional data do you have to show that, in fact, even what was supposed to be implemented, because we're supposed to have no fishing holes now, and yet we do, that that's being implemented. What, what evidence uh, is there that this is not primarily a revenue generator, which the municipalities want because they want the money, that the police services want because they want the money? Or, to quote Doug Schweitzer when he was in Mr. Madu's position two years ago, the stats just simply don't support photo radar as a tool to reduce accidents. So what's changed? Okay, thank you, Rick, for your question. I have certainly read many of your articles uh, highlighting your perspective. And so I'm just going to go back to what we know. There's a 2015 study that was using City of Edmonton data that actually indicates that photo radar does indeed reduce uh, the severity of collision and fatalities by 32%. That is actual data and evidence that indicates that photo radar does enhance safety outcomes. The 2019 report highlighted that municipalities weren't collecting enough information to really to underscore whether they were meeting those safety concerns. And we also didn't know what uh, the revenue was being used for. So I guess my point is, is that we don't have enough data to indicate um, that photo radar is not effective. And that's what we're trying to do here. And you're right, uh, the municipalities were generally in favor, more than generally in favor of photo radar, as were police services. And that's why we're going back to both the municipalities and the police services and say, start collecting this information. Start letting us know how you are spending your revenue. Is it directed for a traffic safety initiatives? And if not, why not? So this is a data collection exercise as well. And as I had mentioned before, uh, other data does indicate, and data out of the US indicates as well that photo radar is effective in enhancing safety goals. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, uh, again, if I may quote a predecessor of, of uh, Mr. Madhu, if you're responsible to budget for a municipality based off of ticket revenue, it means your intention of using the tickets is skewed to begin with. So here we have a system, photo radar, where the municipality and the police services are dependent on this money. So how are we guaranteed that there is going to be, and fishing holes help generate more money? Minister Sani, you're from Calgary. They have photo radar on 16th Avenue, which is a the Trans-Canada Highway, and if you go from 60 to 50, you get dinged. I mean, it's it's not a high accident area. So how do how are we guaranteed that this is not a bias? Uh, exercise because you have skin in the game. You don't want to get the municipalities or police services mad. They have skin in the game because they um, 
they get money from this. So how are we assured that it is not a cash cow, particularly since in the last few years, politicians of both the NDP stripe and the UCP stripe uh, were, uh, were talking about it as a cash cow? Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you from my perspective, and I won't comment on uh, the comments made by previous politicians, um, either party alike. I have looked at the data, and I know that photo radar does enhance safety outcomes based on, on what we know. And in terms of motivations to use this revenue for the right reasons, that is why we're putting controls in the guidelines. That's why we are articulating very succinctly that photo radar is not to be used in transition zones or off on ramps on highways and things like that, or in certain areas, in school zones or construction zones, unless there are actually people there or school is in session at that time. So these controls that we're implementing in the guidelines should resolve some of those issues with fishing holes and with speed traps. And in addition to that, the data collection aspect, which municipalities will be required to submit, is going to be used to determine what future site selection is going to look like. And if we have certain sites right now, like the one that you just mentioned, if it's not showing any significant reductions in safety initiatives, then that would be a good reason to remove that site. So these particular controls that have been added to the guidelines should resolve a lot of those problems. I know you're looking for a guarantee. There's there are no guarantees. That is why we're going to review this entire program a year from now, look at the reports that have been submitted by the municipalities, and see where that leads us. What is the information telling us? And then at that point, we will make further policy decisions if required. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Minister Sony. We do have another question from the room. Hi, Janet French from CBC again, uh, also from Minister Sony. And just a little bit I'm just looking for a bit more information about one of your answers to Rick. So um, what, what data exactly are you collecting and how are you going to use it? That's a great question. So I know that JSG is going to be putting together a template. So the data is going to include um, what the speed limit or the speed rate was at when uh, the ticket was issued. It's going to include things like weather conditions. It's going to include other types of information, um, site locations, which ones are the ones that are most frequently showing uh, tickets issued by photo radar. So there's going to be all kinds of different data points and I don't have everything for you as of yet because we're still putting together the template. And once that template is put together, it'll go to the municipalities. They'll collect that information and submit it to government for our review. And it, it could be something that is subject to change as well. So once you have that data, I mean, you talked a little bit about how you want to make sure that they're spending that revenue correctly. Um, well, what are the rules? Like, how do you want them to be spending the revenue? And why don't you just tell them what's an acceptable use or not an acceptable use for that revenue if you want to discourage fishing holes, cash cows, whatever you want to call them? Yeah. So, Janet, in our engagement with municipalities, most municipalities, and I, and I actually spoke to a few mayors myself, indicated that the majority of revenue is indeed used for traffic safety initiatives. And that is anecdotal. And of course, as we collect this data, we'll be asking those questions. Please let us know how you're using this revenue, how it's furthering the goals of safety on the roads. And uh, once we have some more information around that, we can reassess, we can bring forward further policy decisions, but my expectation is that municipalities will indeed act in good faith and ensure that those revenues are being used for their intended purpose. Thank you. And that does it for questions today. Thank you to the reporters uh, in person and on the phone, and, uh, and thank you to Minister Sani and Minister Madhu. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.